Hello, good morning and welcome here. Today's topic is going to be triggers. Okay, triggers is something that affects our life so much, but it's a word that is used very loosely now. It's like just about everyone talks about triggers, so it's no longer specific for people with PTSD or complex PTSD. So when I say triggers, what I mean is that something causes you like this real intense emotional reaction that I call a 90-10 reaction. So 90% of the that fuel or that charge is from a past traumatic memory and only 10% is warranted for the here and now. Okay, so that, that can be if you see a picture or you see a post on social media or or the, the news it could be a song or a smell, like when we're in a shopping center. For so many of us, that, that song on your split second and, and all in a sudden you, you may freeze up too. For some people it's more anxiety that comes up, for other people it's more anger and rage. But what most of us have in common is that it completely derails you. Like you no longer really know why you're at the shops, what you're meant to get, where your car is. You kind of freeze up a bit and you, you can't thinks things through so it's very debilitating okay and because of our because it's a not a one-time event because it's been going on throughout our childhood there was many traumas there's many triggers for us so it can quickly become very exhausting and tiring to get through the day when you're constantly triggered you constantly have these really intense reactions you know your body gets flooded with all these chemicals like adrenaline and cortisol it, it's yeah, it's, it's exhausting. <laughs> so we want um, to want to share a little bit about what we can do about this, okay? Because essentially, something like a song or a smell is a neutral thing. But what happened for us is that when the traumatic event happened, when that song, for example, was on, our brain just coupled that that song with that traumatic memory so now that those two come together when you're out and about you only hear a snippet of that song and instantly you're back in that traumatic memory okay it's it, it's not a conscious thought that's oh this song what does that remind me of it's not like that that's what people do with um, beautiful memories usually okay we, we have the same coupling there as well you may have a, a song that reminds you of a very very beautiful time with someone or something a happy moment that it, it also is coupled but it's it's a it's a different response we don't we generally don't mind those ones but the other ones we need to find processes and learn how we can uncouple this so that song can be neutral and stand alone again or that smell without bringing that that emo, that that memory back or it's not just bringing the memory back it's reliving that memory for us okay so well, we need to own those triggers, okay? We can't blame anyone else, even knowing it's so frustrating that we have to do now all this hard work. It takes so much time, so much energy for us to, to process or find processes, to desensitize those kind of triggers. But it's possible. That's, that's a good thing. But um, initially, for me, it's really helped me to work with someone. So I don't know whether you have a safe person, you know, even whether this is your partner or but perhaps usually in the beginning it's better to have a coach, a therapist or a psychologist to help you through this, to, to perhaps have that smell in the session so that person can help you talk through that this right here, right now, you're, you, you're safe. So you, your brain can stop. It's, it's a protective mechanism. I, I always say thank you to my brain because I know this, it, it's trying to protect me from future danger but I now need to tell my brain that that smell is not a danger signal. It's a false alarm essentially. And it's like I say thank you, it's right here, right now, I, I am safe. But that there is processes where you can decouple that but I highly recommend you you do that a few times with someone else and then you learn it. Once you know what you're doing it's, it's very fast to learn how to desensitize those triggers and you can do that on your own so you're not dependent on, on anyone on anyone else there. But in relationships it does help if we can have, a, if that person is in tune and they can help you through with that because I, I know from many people that that can cause real friction in relationship. It's, it's really um, difficult because sometimes, especially if that songs happen to be your partner's favorites, <laughs> okay, to find ways that this 
that that person can still listen to that. We don't want to take that away from them, but they, we also want them to kind of understand what it does to us and that they have some kind of, um, give us some time to process that and, and learn to be okay with that. But they are the ones that we know. So if you know that it is a song or or a, a smell that triggers when you know exactly what it is, then it's quite easy to process that through. But as I said, we have lots of um, triggers and often I don't know what actually triggered me. I don't know what it was. I just know I'm triggered. Okay? And in that case, we want to more focus on helping ourselves to get back grounded. It's like accepting that, okay, even so I don't know what that trigger was, not in the past I really tried to work so hard trying to figure out what it, what it is. I let go of that need of knowing what the trigger is and just accept that I, that I am triggered and that I have the tools and skills to grab myself again. Okay, Because once, uh, there's one important thing that I had to really learn is becoming aware of my body. I had no, no awareness. I didn't know any early warning signs. I didn't, I didn't, I, I just didn't. For example, now, um, a couple of days ago, I got an email and I read the first sentence and I instantly, it was almost like a, someone squeezing my heart and my muscles tensed up, but it was very subtle. It wasn't a heart, it wasn't like someone stabbing me in the heart, like a real big trigger or sort of, it was just a gentle sense in my, my, in my chest. And in the past, I would have, I would have been totally oblivious to it. I would have just kept pushing on. I would have just kept reading that whole email. But I trained myself that that that's a pause, okay? To learn that between, like Viktor Frankl says, there is a, a pause between the stimulus and the response, and. And I think this is where groups really help, or even just reading Viktor Frankl's book and seeing, you know, if if he that he was able to put a pause button in there, that, that they've been through horrific trauma, that was possible for them. Is this possible for human beings? Then it's possible for me too to, to trust it. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to find this pause button for me, and it. it I, I had a lot of professional help with that too, so because um. It, it, it does take a lot of time, a lot of patience and, and kindness for ourselves and compassion. Okay? All those things that I didn't have, <laughs> so I'm just saying. So it was not an easy journey, even though that, that might, I might make it sound easy. Okay? But learning to become aware of, of my body sensations, things that I did for that is, for example, I did a lot of body scans, I learned those, or the, the progressive muscle relaxation exercises, Feldenkrais, Feldenkrais was awesome for me to, to really get in tune, feeling those, the, the smaller sensations, I was, I just didn't feel them, to become aware of them, because they don't, it's like I noticed, oh, when I, in a couple of days ago, when I noticed that sense in my chest, I trained myself instantly to put my hand on my chest. This is now my my comforting um, gesture. I never I never was able to put my hand on my chest. I used to hate that gesture. I was more of a person. I I kind of cuddled myself. That was more comforting for me. Or perhaps for you, it's more like rubbing your your legs or holding your face massaging your ears, massaging your hands, whatever it is for you, play around a little bit, explore what what gives you some sense of comfort. So at the moment for me is actually putting my hands on my chest and and just instantly stop, like not keep reading if that is an email or for you might be a, a post on on social media or, or whatever it is there, to, to just pause and, and acknowledge, oh, I'm triggered, acknowledge that emotion and acknowledge also checking in with myself or looking around, scanning the room, reminding myself right here, right now I'm safe. And I always, um, you know, thank my brain. <laughs> it was very hard initially. <laughs> I had a lot of hate uh, for my brain. Uh, do, why, do it, why does it make, have to make my life so hard right now? Okay? But now I'm realizing, no, my brain is actually trying to protect me. It's okay. Thanking my brain, saying, it's, we're safe. It's a false alarm. You don't need to remind me of that. It's, you know, we're, we're good. It's all, all okay. I think that's um, just one of the processes that, that I use. So it, the inner child process that I shared in a, in, a, in a previous email recently. So there's a lot of different processes there as well. So it really helps to have some professional initially do to help you through, guiding you through, help you find something that really works for you. There's something out there, like I always say, there's 
every approach works for somebody, no approach works for everybody, but it's waking up that curiosity and that explorer within ourselves again and giving and, and, and trying a few things out so we can claim that back and desensitize some of those triggers so our day-to-day -day life becomes easier, our quality of life improves because it's just so so exhausting when we're constantly in that in that in a trigger kind of state. So I guess the main point is really to, to find a way to, to, to separate that, that action usually neutral kind of stimulus as neutral neutral event like a song or a smell from that trauma memory getting a, a toolbox full of different grounding kind of techniques that you like and you can use and increasing that that body awareness becoming more aware of those little signs that you have that not in the stomach that twitch in your legs or whatever it is there for you so they're the kind of things that help me to, to desensitize those triggers i hope you find them useful too and as always sending you all lots and lots of love and rainbows to brighten up the tough times just a little See you guys, bye. <laughs>